Notion delivers in spades today with the launch of the public beta of the Notion API. API stands for Application Programming Interface, which in layman terms means that the information is available on a certain app and now can be passed on to another very easily through these bridges. A simple example you use every day is the humble mailbox where you converge all your email boxes into your preferred mail application. For Notion, it explodes the number of possibilities to expand their functionality by just integrating. By exposing the Notion API to integrators like Zapier, Typeform and Automate.io, Notion releases integration opportunities to hundreds of apps right away without any coding. So how does this exactly work? You just set up a bunch of rules using a method called if this, then that. Since the possibilities of setting these kind of rules are endless, you will begin to see many more thousands of use cases through developers over the coming weeks and months. For Notion users who are not developers, you don't need to code, but just pay a small fee to access these bridges on a monthly basis. Over the last few days, I've been exploring some of these use cases for integration. Today, I will pick up two of them for this video. The first one is centered around pulling Google Calendar invites for Zoom calls into your Notion calendar using Zapier. This was not possible earlier. The second one is centered around integrating Google Forms into Notion. If you look at the plans for the various integration providers, you will quickly get to know that traffic costs quite a bit of money. So for businesses that are developing their own APIs, the traffic could flow inwards into their systems without any additional cost. For example, if you use an API with email, you could easily get between 50 and 100 emails a day. And the threshold set by integration service providers could become quite useless in these scenarios. Further, if you are a very heavy user of Todoist or Google Calendar, you will quickly run out of transaction thresholds without custom integrations. However, if you are a heavier Notion user, pulling in the missing information from Calendar, like meeting invites, makes the use case feasible. So over the next year, I feel integrators will have to rationalize prices with volume to make their business cases work. I'm going to walk you through in a very simple way some of the changes that Notion requires you to do in order for you to make this work. Notion has added an information page on developers.notion.com where you can learn some of the technical details including some of the code examples of how to make this work. However, for many, the information might just be a little too much to begin with. So I will explain the whole thing through a three-step integration process. The first two steps are the same for all integrations since they're on the Notion side. The third one will require you to integrate with other services. The principle on which the whole thing works is the ability to point an external workspace towards your Notion workspace. That's done with the help of an API key. So if you have more than one workspace, you will need to generate more API keys. To access the API key, you need to go to settings and members and go into something called integrations and click on develop your own integrations. This will open up a My Integrations page inside of your browser. Since I use an app called Bumper, it allows me to choose the browser. Once you click on the browser, you can add in an integration and choose your workspace. Once you click submit, it generates an integration token. Just remember that you can generate an internal one and a public one. I use the internal one because these are meant for myself. Now that you have this key, store it safely as you can use it in multiple situations. If you have multiple integrations with different intermediary platforms like Zapier, Typeform, or automate.io, you could generate multiple integration keys. The first thing to note is that APIs work between database tables and add information inside of the pages of the database table. The names of the database columns inside of Notion don't need to match exactly with the calendar or the form. However, if you're going to use the target database as an interim step, then it's better to name it in the same way as your destination database. In that case, the final action just becomes a simple drag and drop. If you've been using Notion, you will know that every database has a page link, the rights for which can be shared individually through the share on the top of the page. 
to make sure that you share only that part of your workspace, you will click on share and then on invite. At the bottom, you will get an option called select an integration and you will then select an integration for this option. Now that you have the notion side of things already aligned, we get to step three. The integration service that I will be using in today's video is Zapier. Zapier calls each of the integrations as zaps. Under the free plan, it gives you five zaps and it could go up from 20 to unlimited in their paid plans. Now let's look at the first use case. Zoom plus Google Calendar and Zapier pushing it to Notion. One of the things that Notion cannot do is to integrate Zoom invites into Notion directly up till now. Zoom allows you to push the information directly into the Google Calendar by a native API. Using Zapier and the Notion API, you will be able to push that information into Notion. For this purpose, I set up a simple database inside of my GTD version 2 system called CNM. That's short for calls and meetings. The database is pretty simple. It has just three columns. Task name, which is the default column. The date reminder, which is a date property. And the call link, which is the URL for the Zoom call. If you notice carefully, my main database, which is the GTD planner, includes the same column names. Now let's step into Zapier. Inside of Zapier, it's a two-step process. In step one, you trigger an event to start your zap. In step two, you define the action zap will perform. Going back to step one, you define the source app from where the information is going to flow. Let's select Google Calendar, since the information is already resident within Google Calendar. Now we have to choose the trigger event which in this case is a new or an updated event. On pressing continue, you are requested to sign into Google Calendar. And after you've signed in, you press continue. Then you select the calendar from which you want to take that information. Then you test the trigger to check whether Zapier is able to access Google Calendar successfully. So it will find or create an event for you. And then you can press continue. Then you select the target app that you will access in the action. Choose Notion and choose to create a database item under the action event. Now press continue. Now you can choose a Notion account if you've not linked any Notion account yet. And it will ask you for the API key. And upon entering it, it will let you into the Notion account. And on pressing continue, you will see the database table that you had shared already. In this case, it's CNM. Now it will show you the Notion database fields and ask you to select the ones from within the Google Calendar that closely match the names of these fields. Once you enter everything, you will be prompted to test the exchange of that information. And within a few seconds, you can find that in the Notion database. If you have any errors, like some of the feeds from the Google Calendar cannot be translated, the best thing to do is to put them under content and the information will remain accessible from the page for that record like this. Just remember that you need to have the date fields defined as date fields in the Notion database. And the same goes for select and multi-select fields. Once the test has been done and you're satisfied, you can close it if you don't want to go live yet or just go live with the app. Our second use case involves Google Forms and Zapier that push to Notion. This process is similar on the Google Forms side, but here you will have to look at the Google Form and understand if it's a select or a multi-select or a text feature and pull the information out. You may not want to pull out every single field from the Google Form if you don't need it in the process. If you look at multi-select or select fields, the drop-down inside of Notion also needs to mention the options while you do the population of the same. Similarly here, if you want the information inside the pages, since the integration isn't perfect yet, include this under content. These are initial days and there are some bugs that are surfacing and will continue to surface. This move by Notion will play out well since you get many hundred integrations from day one. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you liked this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.